Good morning and welcome to the Gospel of this morning. We are still in the first letter of Peter and we're coming to the seventh part. Our last study ended with the words, the word of the Lord endureth forever. Then Peter concludes and he says that this word was preached to them as the gospel of Jesus Christ. We nevertheless have to apply the word of God properly. In the, in the, in the second letter, Peter speaks a warning or a cautious word, saying that no prophecy is for private interpretation. We can apply the Bible to our daily life as instruction and often even as a rebuke, but it is the Holy Spirit that points a finger to us when we live against the Word of God. Going beyond this brings us into the twilight of false teaching. I want to read uh, one verse from 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. There it says, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, profitable for reproof, profitable for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Well, with this in mind, we want to go into chapter 2. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone is allowed indeed of men, but chosen of God. Well, Peter starts with the word, laying aside all malice. But when, when we get to expressions like listed in our text, it is good to look at the original word in Greek, which often gives a stronger meaning than that which we read in our English Bibles. Now here the word is kakia, and it speaks of absolute wickedness, as if to make sure that we sort of know where we came from. Malice tends to plan a payback, much worse than what we have received. It is not just a spirit of unforgiveness, but rather a driving force to, to do harm beyond any justification. We see it in malicious damage. Only the devil can drive us into this trap. Now malice is the most outer garment of our sinful nature. And we need to peel it off, put it into the wash, or better, even burn it. And then the next one that he brings out is and all guile, do loss in the original, do loss. Here we have deceit and craftiness against the weaker fellow human being. What a nasty streak this is, plotting the downfall of another man. I, I'm reminded of the scripture um, in John chapter 1 verse 47 where the opposite is, is brought in. Behold an Israelite in whom is no guile. Jesus saw in Daniel this wonderful character trend. A man in whom is no door loss, no guile. It was something Jesus was identifying with in his own character. Well, we, we read in Genesis when Eve was approached by the devil, he beguiled her and, and, and spun a story that brought death to every man and was trying to bring down man and humanity altogether. I, I think Peter brought the subject up because of the false preachers that would come to beguile the congregations and were already at work in his time. Then the next one he mentions is and hypocrisies. Hypocrisies. Well, the English language has taken the word literally from the Greek. In, in, in the ancient culture, a Hippocrates was an actor who was by just changing the mask, playing another character on the stage. They, they were pretenders in the theater. 
Uh, Jesus often called his opposers hypocrites for their pretending to be of God, whereas they were of the devil. And he calls them to be the children of the devil. It is easy to fall into this trap because we do not want others to know who we really are and therefore like to put on a bit of a mask. We, we may fool our neighbor and our friends, but hardly can we fool God. The next one is, and envies. One of the great human virtues is to be happy with what we have. We seldom find such people. Everybody wants a bit more than what they have, what they have and possess. And, but all other thoughts cultivate an envious spirit. It is often born out of our own imagination. Well, I want to illustrate it with a picture that I painted years ago and called The trees in my neighbor's garden are bigger. And here it is. Lots of trees and then a set of smaller trees surrounded by a wall and a man sitting under it. Well, that little man is us, you see, behind the wall. And the, our imagination goes crazy and wild. And we think that all things are very well and good just over the wall and the trees are much bigger and have more fruit. Yet we forget that the man behind the other on the other side of the wall is the most miserable person in spite of the great mansion and the big trees and the boat and the Ferrari. If we do not see the misery with his sick wife, we, we don't know about his messed up children full of drugs and the, the overloaded credit cards and the business problems that he has. And, well, why should we be envious? Perhaps we should just lower the wall and then look over it and see that the trees are just as small, just as small as ours. And here is the picture for it. It's a man at the lowered wall looking over and sees, well, it's true, all the trees are the same size. And all evil speaking, kata lalia. Slander and defamation would be an alternative, but the straight translation would be just speaking against or speaking down. Don't we just love it? Speaking down a little bit. All speech that speaks down would fall into this category. We, we, we are the only creatures that are given a language that can make us to understand one another. Now the fountain or the spring of it is in the heart. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 34. For out of the abundance of the heart man speaketh. Well, we can speak good, abundantly good, or we can speak abundantly evil, abundantly catalania. And then Peter goes on and he says, as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word. Peter does obvious not right to a mature congregation. Babes in Christ need a bottle of milk every so often. In fact, we hear the crying demands every two hours. And as parents hardly get any sleep. With, with new Christians, it's a similar situation. They are on the phone, on email, on WhatsApp, frequently asking endless questions that seem quite clear to us. Then it says that they need the right formula, which is the sincere milk of the word. And this is perhaps one of the great problems that we have in the church today. There is no sincere word of, of the Lord. It is, it is rare in the world. The result? Bearded men in nappies and dummies in their mouths. We need to grow spiritually and in the word because it is difficult to stand on one leg for so long. But spiritual growth, growth in the Word of God. Yes, we need to grow in the Word, in the preached Word of God, because it adds to our faith. Paul spent 18 months in Corinth, and he preached daily in the house of Justus, Justus. In Ephesus we have the story that he preached a long, long, long sermon. 
that a young man fell out of the window because he fell asleep. How much do we take in every week? How much time do we spend hearing the word of God? How, how much time do we spend in the word? Well, I, I do 15 minutes in German and 15 minutes, maybe sometimes even less, every week. And, and I send it out. And I wonder how many are actually listening to the end or paying attention for 15 minutes. But, but I continue every week and I do it and I do it, I do it again. Yes. Uh, Peter goes on. That you may grow thereby. Some people don't want to grow. Most of us don't want to grow old. But when we're young, we want to grow up. Babes on milk seem to grow the fastest. And later on again, their teenage years, they develop a healthy appetite and they grow again. Getting the babes of milk is nevertheless a challenge and often meets with resistance. Yet it is important that we get them to solid food and to let them acquire a taste for broccoli and cauliflower, not just milk. It is the parent that insists on a good diet and we expect the same thing on a spiritual level. Not everything in the Bible is nice and easy. Many, many scriptures have to be digested and digested again and we have to chew the cut and put into the right context the word that we read. A, a great part of our youth we spend at school and, and we have to learn subjects which we do not like. Well the same happens in our spiritual youth. Not everything runs smoothly and effortly and effortless. But in the end, we will grow and will have authority. Well, then Peter carries on. You have tasted that the Lord is gracious. As we get more solid food, we learn to taste the good things and recognize them as such. Chastisement, for instance, at the outset does not taste very good. It, it happens because God loves us. And soon we will learn the value of it. Now walking with Jesus is not a stroll through the park on Sunday morning. And he warns us with his own words, John chapter 15 and verse 18. If the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. We are assured nevertheless that we are loved of God and that he has saved us by grace and by grace alone. Not thus far uh, today. And if you think that this little 15 minutes is good enough to pass on to someone else, do it. Let's spread the good news all over. Until next time, God bless you. Amen.